It is impossible to live without failing at something, unless you live so cautiously that you might as well not have lived at all, in which case you fail by default. J.K. Rowling, the world-renowned author of the Harry Potter book series, gave a commencement speech to the 2008 graduating class at Harvard University. The crowd is filled with intelligent individuals who are about to enter into the real world, and Rowling wants to leave them with a message of understanding the benefits of failure and the importance of imagination. As Harvard graduates, Rowling touches on the fact that these individuals may have very few experiences with failure and perhaps even fear the very thought of failing. Rowling sympathizes with the crowd because she was once in their shoes, a freshly graduated 21-year-old <coughs> who was entering the world afraid of failing. However, Rowling learns and wants to share with the crowd that failing can help someone learn something about themselves and the relationships they have. The next topic she talks about is about the importance of failure. Unlike the failure most would imagine an author would talk about, Rowling touches on imagining being in somebody else's shoes, appreciating your privileges, and making a difference in the world with your sympathizing. Overall, Rowling intends to help her listeners understand the importance of the knowledge gained from failure and how to sympathize with others' hardship. First, Rowling uses ethos, logos, and pathos, appealing to both ethos and pathos, Rowling starts by going into depth about the darkest time in her life. She shares her own battles with failure and what failure has done to help her life and career. Rowling starts in her speech by saying, a mere seven years ago, after, a mere seven years after my graduation day, I had failed on an <coughs> epic scale. An exponential and exponentially short marriage had imploded. I was jobless, a lone parent, and as poor as it is possible to be in modern Britain without being homeless. The fears that my parents had had for me and that I had had for myself had both come to pass, and by every usual standard, I was the biggest failure I knew. Rowling went through something that would set most individuals back. Every aspect of her life had crumbled right before her eyes. However, this failure was ultimately <coughs> the stepping stone for Rowling to focus on what she loves most, writing. Rowling uses her own experience to show that hitting rock bottom does not have to be the end of the story, but simply the beginning of a new chapter. Rowling again uses this method when describing her time working at the African Research Department at Amnony International Headquarters in London. And as long as I live, I shall remember walking along an empty corridor and suddenly hearing from behind a closed door a scream of pain and horror such as I have never heard since. The door opened and the researcher poked her head out and told me to run and get a hot drink for the young man sitting with her. She had just given him the news that in retaliation for his outspokenness against his country's regime, his mother had been seized and executed. Working in this department, Rowling realizes how fortunate she was and realizes the evil of humanity, but also the best of humanity can bring. The experience she gained from working here and empathizing with the story she heard helped Rowling develop, develop an ability to step into somebody else's situation. Lastly, Rowling appeals to Logos by talking about our nature as humans by commenting, Unlike any other creature on this planet, humans can learn and understand without having experience. They can think themselves into other people's places. Acknowledging humans' unique ability to use imagination in such ways helps the <clears throat> listener understand their place in the world, 
when it comes to thinking about others. Rawling explains that by using this ability that was inside of you all along can help you make a difference in a world that can feel as though it will never change from its own ways. Second, Rowling frequently references the magical world that she had created. In seven transitional places within her speech, Rowling makes <coughs> mention of the world she created that saved her life. The use of illusion draws the crowd back into the overall message of the lesson she wants her listeners to receive. For example, Rowling says in her speech, so, given a time turner, I would tell my 21 year old self that personal happiness lies in knowing that life is not a checklist of acquisitions and achievements. The illusions made by Rowling helps listeners connect these big issues to pop culture, which in turn makes it easier to relate to themselves as well. Lastly, Rowling delivers a speech that is well appreciated by many listeners who heard it whether they were at the actual event or listening to it 12 years later. As for the audience there on the day, Rowling gives her speech to the graduates who were on their way to experience life outside of the classroom for the first time. These individuals spent their whole lives driven to succeed because failure was never an option. Rowling goes as far to say, the fact that you are graduating from Harvard suggests that you are not very well acquainted with failure. You might be driven by the fear of failure as much as, as, much as the desire to succeed. Indeed, your conception of failure might not be too far off from the average person's idea of a success, so high you have already flown. Rowling chose these two topics to discuss because she understands the situation. As someone who has gone through it years before, Rowling had insight on just how freeing putting aside your old views of failure and taking a step back from your own life can do for you. Rowling wants to leave her, her audience of Harvard graduates the opportunity to change their view of failure and imagination to one that can make the most difference for the world around them. In addition to the audience on the day of the speech, Rowling makes her speech relevant for any person making the big transition in their life who, or who are stuck in their ideas of these two topics. As a senior in high school, my own high school career was based around succeeding as much as possible so I could get into my dream college. Because I was so hyper-focused on this aspect of my life, it led me down a path of dreading failure, missing out on the world around me. Rowling's view on failure and imagination wants to remove this hyper-focused attitude and change it to one that has a more, com more positive outcome that will benefit the entire world. Overall, Rowling's speech to the Harvard graduating class of 2008 uses ethos, logos, and pathos, illusion, and relevant topics for the graduating class and other listeners to relate to and reflect on their own lives. Rowling understood that these two aspects of life can dictate the way we live it. However, she wanted her listeners to realize that it isn't how much you make or what you succeed in. It's about making the most of the little time we have left. She concludes her speech with a quote from Siaka, a Roman philosopher stating, as is a tale, so is life. Not how long it is, but how good it is.